Hello and welcome. Please pause this video and try the problem on your own. Okay, so in this problem we're comparing g of x and f of x, right? And if you notice, g of x is equal to x squared, and they want to know how does f of x compare to g of x. So I am going to solve this um, rather quickly and talk to you about how I'm going to be solving it and then I'll give some background information after so you get a better sense of what's going on. So first of all, g of x is our basic parabola x squared. So that's a parabola that is centered around the origin, the vertex is 0, 0 and then it goes up symmetrically, it opens upward both sides from there. Then we have f of x and several things are happening to transform it. First of all, we're adding 1 to the function that will raise g of x. So right away, if we just add 1, let's say this is going up 1, then it will be the same function, opening the exact same way, but shifted upwards. Then, in the parentheses here, we're subtracting 2, and it's a transformation to the right. So maybe it would go right, let's change colors to green, so it would go two places to the right. The whole function would shift to the right. So in general, when you subtract inside parentheses like this, when you're squaring, your function will move to the right. If you were adding, it would go to the left. And again, here, this, this operator, the constant, moves it either upwards if it's positive or downwards if it's negative. Finally, we multiply it by 3, and that makes the function much steeper, three times steeper, in fact. So let's grab that in orange, something like this, let's say. So it's going to open at a faster rate and be narrower. Out of the choices they give us, I see that we're going to eliminate 1 and 4 because f of x is not wider, right? It's steeper, so it's going to be narrower. And then we know it's moved to the right twice, so that's here. And then up one unit, that's choice 2. Now let's just take a look at this because um, really this function is in something called vertex form. Now vertex form is the one of the two most common forms we use in describing parabolas. Vertex forms, unlike standard forms, go over standard form. Standard form is something like, let's see, if f of x equals a, a number, times x squared, plus b, a number, times x, and then plus c, your constant. You can turn this vertex form into standard form by squaring x minus 2, so x minus 2 times x minus 2, then tripling it, and then adding 1, and you would rearrange and combine the terms, and you would get standard form. Vertex form, vertex form is really helpful in finding the vertex, hence the name of it. And it's written in a times x minus h squared plus k form. And we use different letters here um, because it turns out that v, is called v the vertex, always equals h comma k. So in other words, I look at this right here, I know my vertex, I look at this negative 2 and this positive 1, and notice positive 1, that's our k value, so our vertex here will have a 1 for the y value, and then here is, it's 2, right, 2 for the h value, because if you look at the structure of the formula, if it's minus h, right, it's the opposite of whatever you see, so if it's minus h, it's positive 2. If it was plus 2 here, the vertex would be negative 2 comma 1. So that's another way of thinking about this, the vertex form. You could say, oh, the vertex is a 2, 1. And before the vertex with g of x, the standard like x squared kind of parabola is at 0, 0. So the change from 0, 0 to 2, 1 is going to the right twice and up once. You can see that movement right there. Finally, to get a sense of this, look at this blue graph. This is g of x. Here's the equation. Now f of x, I have it at 0, x squared. It's a flat line at 0. And we can manipulate the a, the h, and the k terms to see how it moves. So here, let's set a to 1. Right, notice how as I increase a, it gets steeper and steeper and steeper. Now it matches g of x squared. If I raise, raise it to triple that, you'll see how it gets right, three times steeper. It gets narrower. So I'm going to set it back to 1. Now I want you to see how the h and k values move our function, f of x. h, right here. Notice if it's positive, it goes to the left. And if it's negative, it shifts to the right. right? So in this problem, I think it's minus, is a minus 2. So there you can see it's shifting to the right twice. Then as we add in a k value, I'll move this over, right? k will move up, right? Or down, uh, move the function up or down. So if it's positive, it moves it up. If it's negative, it moves it down. Here it just goes to 1. And there we have it. It's the same function up and over. 
and then it's just three times steeper here. So that's what f of x actually looks like. And if you know, if you want to go further, you can imagine that if a is negative, it flips it upside down. But still, if you look at the absolute value of this a value as it gets larger, as the absolute value gets larger. So here, absolute value of negative three is three. That's a steeper function, even though it's upside down. Right? You can see it's upside down. It's steeper. Then I go to negative four, and the, I've increased the absolute value again. So the absolute value of negative four is four, and it's even steeper. So that negative sign, the a value, can flip your parabola upside down. All right, hope this helped.